I was prepared to write this episode with many jokes embedded throughout, but was experiencing writer's block. Then I realized something. I don't even tell jokes, so why would I suddenly be able to write them? So without further ado, on today's humorless episode of Brief Brain Facts, I'm discussing humor and the brain. So technically, this episode isn't without humor. What sets us humans apart from other animals within the animal kingdom? Well, one thing that seems to be a consensus is that we humans enjoy and appreciate humor. Some of us go through great lengths to make others laugh, and we seem to be the only species that demonstrates that kind of behavior. Humor is an important and vital aspect of our social lives. So much so that we may even find ourselves laughing at a joke or situation we didn't even find funny, just because others were laughing. Laughter has been shown to be therapeutic, showing benefits in one's central nervous system and immune system, and is a way in which people cope during very difficult times in their lives. Plus, let's be real here, it feels really good to laugh. We laugh at each other and ourselves, but what makes situations or jokes generally the things we find funny, funny? To answer myself, there's a few theories proposed by researchers who specialize in the psychology of humor, and we're focusing on the incongruity resolution theory. This theory suggests a two-stage cognitive model in which both surprise and the formulation of a new interpretation of events results in humor. In this way, resolution of any mismatches that arise, the incongruity aspect, is a problem-solving task designed to change the incongruity into something that makes sense, thereby resulting in something being perceived as funny. As an example, what did the hippocampus say during its retirement speech? I don't know what. Thanks for the memories! Get it? Because the hippocampus is responsible for memory and the retirement is about memories? Anyways, we have several incongruities going on with this joke that need to be resolved. Now, if a human made a retirement speech, would it be possible for anyone to say, thanks for the memories? Yes, that's certainly within the realm of possibilities, but not particularly funny. Well, a hippocampus doesn't give retirement speeches, but if they did, what would they say? The hippocampus is known as the storage center for memories. If they did say anything, it would most likely be related to memories. So would it be acceptable for a hippocampus to say, thanks for the memories? Probably so, thereby making an incongruous situation congruous. Jokes are never that funny when you have to explain them. Based on the incongruity resolution theory, several studies were designed to look at brain regions associated with the two-stage cognitive model of surprise followed by coherence, which researchers generalized to two stages of humor, detection or understanding followed by appreciation. According to scientists, the detection phase may involve areas of the brain associated with resolving uncertainties between assumptions and outcomes, while the appreciation phase involves areas of the brain associated with affective or emotional processing. Studies have demonstrated involvement of the left frontal and temporal lobes, an area corresponding to intentions and resolution of ambiguities in healthy people. Additionally, people with damage to the left hemisphere, particularly inferior frontal and posterior temporal regions, show impairments in detecting mismatches in stories and jokes. Thus, inferior frontal and posterior temporal regions, typically involved in language, may be heavily involved in resolving mismatches between expectations and outcomes our detection phase of humor. Both the insula and the right portion of the amygdala have been correlated to the affective or emotional understanding, our appreciation phase of humor situations and jokes. According to researchers, the insula may be responsible for the visceral or physical reaction like a laugh that comes from the emotional content of humor. But the right portion of the amygdala is heavily implicated during the appreciation phase. In fact, the amygdala sends information directly to the hippocampus, an area responsible for memory, and they both activate during memory construction of emotional experiences. This may be why jokes and humorous experiences that result in an emotional response are memorable and therefore retold. Humor is a pretty complicated process. Interestingly, the involvement in the portions of the brain heavily associated with language may be why humor is a particularly human experience. And remember, since humor is good for your brain, try to laugh at my humor. Please. Because I, I'm funny. What's your favorite joke, and does it follow the formula we discussed? Comment below. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to our channel, and check out our Patreon page for links to sources we used in our research. Don't forget to hit that like button, and as always, thank you for watching.